Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it hath lightened upon Israel so God sends out God warns God is long-suffering God is love God is not this mean angry uh, being that just destroys everybody without a cause every man that God will cast into hell in the church age they will have some kind of witness if not then God will judge them by the works the books were open Revelation 20 everyone that goes down every other week that we're down at the uh, the farmers market they can never say they never knew. They are without excuse when they hear us preach the gospel. God sends us down to people like that. Like verse 8, the Lord sent the word. The Lord tells, hey, listen, I want you to go all in the world and preach the gospel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim. And we have a bad condemnation about Ephraim, who has joined against Judah. And that was back in one of our studies in Isaiah. Ephraim's joined the idols. Let him alone, Hosea says. And it's funny because Ephraim is the one, one of the tribes of, I'm going to say, 14. Now, why do I say 14? Because there are 12 tribes of, of Joseph. That includes Ephraim and Joseph. But Joseph also splits off into Ephraim and Manasseh. Levi doesn't become a, a you know inheritance of the land because they become the priests of the Lord. So there are 14 tribes, and of 14 tribes that the people in Salt Lake City can choose, they choose the one that joined the idols and that went against Judah. So I wonder how well those people in Salt Lake City do Hosea and Isaiah. And the inhabitants of Samaria, now that's the northern capital of Israel that's the ten northern tribes that split off with Jeroboam when Rehoboam split the nation Samaria is the capital of north and Jerusalem is the capital of Judah that say in the pride which is never of God and stoutness of heart the bricks are falling down but we will build with new we will build with you stone we're going to build better. And we're going to do it without God. The sycamores, there's the trees, are cut down. But we will change them into cedars. And I got a note here. Chapter 7, verse 1. No, that one, that's verse 11. Excuse me. So, cedars are probably better than sycamore. You know, what we built with is, 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 is falling down, but we're going to do better. Therefore the Lord shall send up the adversaries of resin. Now that's chapter 7 verse 1. That's the king. And all through the book of Judges, when Israel did wrong, God sent uh, the Philistines, God sent the, the enemies of the land into them. And Israel served in bondage. Israel served under their sins. And this is what's going to happen again. God, you know, Listen, it, it's God... Bringing out chastisement for, for doing wrong. It's a punishment. It's harsh, but God wants you to do right against him and join his enemies together. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind. You got more than one nation coming in. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. Now devour, kill, shed blood. Eat up the trees, eat up the fruit, destroy the land. For all this, his anger, God's anger, is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So he's gonna, he's gonna beat, he's gonna, he's going to kill, he's going to destroy because of sin. Oh, that mean nasty God! No, they didn't turn. You know what the scariest thing to read in the Book of Revelation? Of all the plagues. 
of all the events that happen in 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 the world the scariest thing in the book of Revelation is and they repented not of their sins and they cursed God. One thousand years of, of peaceful reign that man wants the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, this absolute, the curse is gone and all that. Satan is loose and he's able to gather an army against God. There are people in their sin that no matter what God does, they will not get right. And they may be your mom, they may be your dad, they may be your spouse, they may be your children. Many will go on the Broadway. Few will go through the straight gate. And it's just something you're going to have to get over with. And if it's a loved one, you're going to have to just move on and, and find somebody who wants to be the few. It's a hard thing. Not all will be saved, but those God died for all. For the people turneth not unto him. They don't turn to God. That smites them. God smiting them. Yes, God is smiting them, but he's doing it. He wants them to turn. He wants them to repent. You want a child, when you bend over your knee to punish, you want that child to truly repent and be sorry and not do it again. And many cases it doesn't happen neither do they seek the Lord of hosts that is why he's he says in verse 12 for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still why verse 13 because they won't turn to God they won't repent that Rich man in hell, man, he's crying out for mercy. He's never going to get it. All he's going to do is get the wrath of God. Uh, the last verse in John chapter 3. It's too late. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. One day. Destruction. The ancient, the old. And the honorable, the, the high authority, he is the head. So we're being told what verse 14, the head and tail is. There's, there's no, oh, I wonder what the head and tail is. Oh, I think we go back to the original. No, 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 no. God already tells you. The old men and those that are in authority are the head. And the prophet, all right, prophet, that teaches lies, he is the tail. And they will be destroyed in one day, verse 14. What about, all the, what about all the men and women in pulpits today that teaches lies? You know? They're going to be destroyed. If they're saved, well, their works are going to be destroyed. Their rewards will be destroyed. If they're unsaved, they will be destroyed. For the leaders of this people, Israel, cause them to err. Oh, there's a verse for America. The leaders of this nation are causing the people to err. But our money says in God we trust. Really? You do? That's a small G. That ain't a big G. You trust in the God of the Mormons, trust in the God of the Jehovah Witnesses, Trust in the God of the uh, Roman Catholics. Trust in the God of the Pentecostals. Trust in the God of uh, you know Allah. You trust in the God. You don't trust in the God of the Bible. No, you should serve the Sodomites in that. And if you don't, we're going to take your business. We're going to give you classes. You should be no. That's an error. Go ahead and get married. No, that's an error. And there are laws now. And they that are led of them are destroyed. America is destroyed. Because America will not get right. Sorry. I'm, it's not going to get right. There's going to be no revival. It is destroyed. It's just a day when God says, all right, today's the day. One day. Verse 14. Listen, if God judged Israel, if God judged Judah, 
And they are his people. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve times. If they are the apple of God's eyes and the beloved of God, and they are still his people, will always be his people. And if he has cast upon Jerusalem and upon Israel what he has done because of their sins, don't you think America is going to sit back and nothing's going to happen to her? If nothing happens to America, God is going to have to rise up Belshazzar, clean off him from, from being in hell, and apologize to him. If nothing happens to America. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. God enjoys young men. Strength of a nation. I work at a grocery store, and we're coming up on uh, what is it? spring break. Our young men are foolish. We have got a bunch of idiots in college today that are going to get a diploma to be an idiot. God has no joy in that. God has no joy in, in smoking. God has no joy in pot. God has no joy in booze. God has no joy in what's going on with our young people today. In their actions, they have no regard for the for the elders. They won't listen. They know it all, and they don't seek God. So God has no joy. Neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. And that's the law. The law says you were to be proper judgment for the fatherless and the widows. You are to help them. You are not to look up, down upon them. And God says, you know what? Defend yourself. Israel, they're separated from God. They're separated from Jerusalem. They're separated from the temple. They're out of it. All right, go do it yourself. Take care of yourself. You don't want to listen to me? Take care of yourself. That's a frightful thing. That's a frightful thing to have God say, take care of yourself. And he's the one, verse 12, for all his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still take care of yourself when I am giving you troubles and tribulations and trials and chastisement go ahead take care of yourself I'm telling you for everyone is a hypocrite Ooh. we just love the Lord <laughs> I don't love you and an evildoer. I, sorry to say, I know what that one, that hypocrite and evildoer is. It's really close. Sat in church, sat under the Bible, passed out gospel tracts, and he's a hypocrite and an evildoer. He had the act for all this. His God's anger is not turned away. You haven't repented. You didn't get right. But his hand is stretched out still. That's a cre complete copy of verse 12. So oh, mean, nasty God. He's, try he's trying to get you to get right before it's too late. You realize death, rapture, Judgment seat of Christ, the great white throne judgment, it's too late. While you're living and breathing now, if, if God is giving you troubles and problems because of your sin, He is giving you opportunity to repent, correct, and get right and so He can reward you. You know, if parents have a child, and that child says, oh, I would like to have a brand new bike. Oh, please, I love it. And that child is done wrong. It, 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 it has done something it wasn't supposed to. And, and you, you you get out the rod or the, the belt or whatever you use. And you punish him. And they go back and do it again. You're not going to give them the bike. You're going to give them the belt or the rod or whatever you use for correction. You can't give them the bike. And you're saying that, oh, they just only would get right to realize that what they want, I got behind the door. 
It, it's in the closet. It's in the garage. If they only do right and you punish them and they go back and they do even worse. Oh, man, come on. I want to give you what you want, but you're bad. I can't give it to you. Get right so I can give you. God wants to give them blessings, but they won't get right for wickedness burneth as the fire. Proverbs says, you know, the thing, the fire, uh, chapter 29 and 30, I think it is, fire says, I want more. Give me more. You know, you realize if given the opportunity, fire will burn the entire earth, if it could. As long as there is oxygen, as long as there is some kind of fuel, Fire will burn. Look at the sun. And yet the Bible says the sun one day will go out. If the fire could say according to Proverbs, oh, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to burn the whole world. And the Bible says in verse 18, wickedness burns as a fire. Wickedness wants to run through, and it is running through the entire world. We put the USS Nautilus at the North Pole. And I guarantee when we went to the North Pole and Admiral Byrd went to the North Pole, somebody up there in the, in the Nautilus and somebody up there with Admiral Byrd sinned. We have got scientists down in Antarctica, in the bottom, the South Pole. They're down there doing science research and all that. I guarantee for all have sinned there, there's someone there at the South Pole right now if they're there, they are sinning. So from north to south pole, from east to west, this entire planet is consumed a fire of wickedness. Well, all right. Right now, I know that there are Trident Ballistic U.S. nuclear submarines Somewhere in the bottom of the ocean, somewhere right now. How I many? I don't know. Right now, there is one somewhere. And what they do is they, they go out to sea for six to nine months, some or maybe longer. They go where they're, where they're told to go, and they park themselves on the ocean floor, and they just sit there with 24 nuclear missiles. 24 missiles. And their job is to sit there and wait to see one day if they need to launch those missiles. So sitting on the bottom of the ocean floor somewhere, there are men, and now women, oh my, women in the submarine sir. There are men and women sitting on the bottom of the ocean right now, and they are sinning. We've got right now floating over our head, the International Space Station. I think that's what it's called. And there are people right now floating around the earth in that international space station, and they are sinning. For all have sinned to come to the shore of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. From, from outer space to the deepest ocean, there are sinners. From north to south, from east to west, oh, we want more sins. There's no church service going on in the international uh, space station. There's no church service going on under the, under the water. There's no Bible Baptist Church up in the North Pole. There's no Bible believing church down in Antarctica. It's surrounded from east to west. We got to go in Florida. We got to go 21 miles to go to a Bible believing church. I like to have the Lord open up a church. Uh, have me open up, get get something going down here in Daytona. But there are so many churches in Daytona, so much, and no so little for the word. For the wickedness, burneth as the fire, it devoureth the briars. That's the waste. That's the unwanted. The waste and the unwanted of God are going to burn in fire. And thorns, that's the curse. That is plants that you don't get fruit from. And shall kindle in the thickets. That's the good stuff. There are good people. There are people who do what they're supposed to do. There are people out there who pay the law. There are people out there who pay their taxes. There are people who go to work. There are people who love their family. 
there are people who who, who go either the wife takes care of the children in the house and the husband takes care of you know the job and the bills and all that and they may go to a church and they will burn in hell because they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Hell is full of good people. Hell is full of people who have no fruit at all. They're wicked. Imagine a Jewish person today goes out to work, takes care of his family, his family has no need of one, he has a normal problem, he has a good job, whatever, and he lives a normal life, pays his taxes, does everything he's supposed to, takes his family to the doctors, and I mean, and they go out to restaurants, and they got a nice house, all that, and he dies and ends up with Adolf Hitler in hell. You get an atheist doesn't believe in God, rejects the Bible and everything like that, rejects you know the the carols and the the preaching and gospel tracts. And just, he does not believe in God and all that, and he ends up in hell with a pope. You imagine that moment when when it, <coughs> an atheist ends up in hell looking at a pope like, "What are you doing here? I didn't believe on Jesus. I was the victor of Christ." There are good and there are wicked people in hell. The thickets of the forest. And they shall mount up like the lifting up of, of smoke. Smoke just goes up. Eternal. Even though you don't see smoke, the elements are still there. Even though you don't see that soul in hell, it's still there. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, oh, wrath, is the land darkened, fire. You know, of all the temples that Jesus walked in Jerusalem, from my understanding, the only thing they really got, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a wailing wall. I haven't seen pictures, I've never been there. Where is the temple? Titus in 70 AD destroyed the place. When Nehemiah is walking on his walking with his ass and he, he's walking the walls, he comes to this place. He can't even get by him because the, the debris, the the, the rocks, the, the, it's destroyed. That one beautiful temple that got it was the center of God, center of the world. Where is the center of the world? It's Jerusalem. And wh what sits at the, at the center of the world today? The dumb of the rock. Satan temple sits at the center of the world today. And you got a whole bunch of other little dumb of the rocks all over. They're called stadiums where you worship pigskins and and, and balls. And the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. Uh oh. Not gasoline. Not diesel. Not lighter fluid. People. You know what happened? That happened in World War II with all ages and all sexes. When, the, when Jews were put into the crematorium, they became the fuel of fire. Chapter 9, verse 19 happened literally in the concentration camps of World War II, and no man shall spare his brother. And yet there were a few that escaped that. What was all that? Was that a mean, nasty man that destroyed Jews? And all? That was God saying, you know what? Get right. Well, that's just a harsh. I wonder how many Jews, somehow, some way, through Bible preaching, World War II, I wonder how many actually trusted Jesus Christ as their faith. Few did. I know few did. Not many. But imagine a Jew 
who is in the consecration camp, and whatever death is going to happen to that is vile. No matter what it was, it was vile. He escapes. Or she escapes. And goes for their life and lives. And we got V-Day uh, of, of America over Japan. And World War II is over. And all the yellow ribbons. And all the spectacular. And radio, uh, uh, the Times Square is, 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 is excited. And, and the sailors kissing a, a woman. And magazines. And the war is over. And glory to God. And you said it like you, you did not die in World War II in a concentration camp. You have not rejected Jesus Christ as your Savior. As a Jew. As your Messiah. And you still die and go off to hell and end up burning for all eternity. Whereas a possibility in World War II in a concentration camp, a Jew comes across a Protestant or a, or, or a Baptist and a witness, and, and before their dying day, before coming to the crematorium, that Jew has been witnessed about Jesus Christ and receives Jesus Christ as their Savior. They go into the concentration camp, they go into the into the crematorium, and they're going to be burned, and they, Shadrach, Meshach, and go wake up in glory. Woo what? I was just burning that. What happened? Yeah. He's got holes in his hands. He's the fourth man of fire. I wish I could speak Hebrew. There's a way out. The fourth man of fire for, for, the, for the Hebrew young men were the Lord, the Son of God. The way out here is God doing what God told you to do. But they don't. Imagine a person. They are in a burning house. Every window, every door has flames. There's no way out. Here comes a firefighter. He comes smashing up through the floor with his axe. He says, come follow me. No. Come. The place is on fire. No. Will you get out of here right No. I absolutely refuse. That fireman gets to a point, that's it. He, he can't. Okay, fine. That fireman gets up. Well, why didn't you rescue that person? He did not want to come. And that guy burns up in that fire, in that house. Why? Because he didn't want to do what the fireman told him to do. So the wrath of the Lord of hosts is in the land, darkened. And the people shall be as a few of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. That came to pass. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. Stealing. How many Jews in World War II had to steal food and be hungry? And in the tribulation period, when you ordered to buy, you got to receive the mark. You got to steal. You know what one of the commandments is for the Jews, thou shalt not steal. The law is coming back. The law is there in Isaiah. Oh, I'm hungry. Thou shalt not steal. Think about that for a moment. And he steals something and he's still hungry. He doesn't satisfy it. He shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. All right, he, get, he steals with the right hand. He's not satisfied. He's able to get food with the left hand. He's still not satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Wow. Cannibalism of your own body. I'm not talking about an airplane crashes somewhere and there are dead bodies and in order to survive, I mean, you got to eat the, the, the meat of humans. Oh, I'll never do that. You don't know what you're going to do to survive. But here is someone that they're eating their own flesh. I mean, you're not to eat the blood of goats. You're not to eat the blood of any animal. 
You're definitely not to eat the blood of humans and eating the blood of your own self. Manasseh, Ephraim. That's the boys of Joseph. The type of Christ of all type of Christ in the Bible. Ephraim and Manasseh. They together shall be against Judah. Uh oh. No, who you want? It's a civil war. It's the Hatfields and the McCoys. For all this, his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out to three times. Lamentations 4 4. Lamentations 4 8, 4 10, and 5 3. It's just. Why is there so much misery in the world? Because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Why is there even more misery and death? Because man won't do what God tells him to do. Why are there even more miseries? Three times. For all this, the anger, for his anger is not turned away, but his hand starts. Why is there even more? Three times. Because man will keep on continuing to do what he's doing and will not listen to God. Plain and simple. Rebel against God and you're not going to get good. 